first things first to our top story. It's it's a little bit of a a, a, a soft week, John. There's not a whole lot yep. of major news to drop because of the impending doom of the just nonstop <laughs> hype, nonstop fire. It's going to be E3. Um, but there was this interesting PlayStation blog article. Uh, Sid Schumann sat down with Herman Holst in a little bit of a Q&A to talk about PlayStation Studios generally. Obviously, Herman, he took over the, the reins of PlayStation Studios uh, last year, and he's been heading up ever since. So he's been able to shed some light on uh, what his vision is and what the future looks like. So there's a, there's a few little nuggets here, uh, along with some major headlines. We'll start with um, the beginning where he talks about how there are more than 25 titles in development at PlayStation Studios. Uh, That encompasses their traditional first-party studios like Naughty Dog and Somniac, Santa Monica, but also their second-party partnerships like Haven and Firewalk and all these other companies. Almost half of these are new IP. The other half of their titles that are set in franchises that PlayStation fans already know and love. New IP is the lifeblood of gaming, says Herman. But new IP is just one aspect of our strategy. Ultimately, I want PlayStation Studios to be fiercely daring to take risks. I want us to continue to embrace the legacy of PlayStation, pushing the boundaries of gaming, keep making games that matter, games that probably wouldn't have been made anywhere else. Uh, That is to try and quell the stories that have been happening of late about how PlayStation can't take risks or are more risk-averse than they have been in the past, uh, trying to nail that in the head. Uh, a, a big part of that story was obviously the uh, studio bend and how they couldn't get Days Gone 2 greenlit. So mm-hmm. uh, he mentions here, as you know, Ben Studio is working on a very exciting new IP that they're very, very passionate about. They're building a deep, op- they're building on their deep open world systems that they developed with Days Gone. So I'm really happy for Ben Studio. And of course, the studio themselves tweeted out, we're excited to announce today that we are expanding the Ben Studio portfolio to work on a brand new IP. Just uh, taking that in for a moment, we'll start with the general scope. 25 titles in development, half of them new IPs, several partnerships in there. What's that looking like to you? Does that look like a strong uh, lineup in the works? How far off are we talking for these things? Oh God! This is twenty twenty six ish. Like th- th- these are games. Some of these games we're not going to see for the longest time. I think this was kind of a damage control concept for Herman and PlayStation with the we don't want to take risks concept. So I-, I think this was literally let's go ahead and like put out- put out the fires as best we can. It's nice to see that we're going to get new IPs. I mean, let's be honest. We all we do love Uncharted. Mm-hmm. Uncharted 5 is probably one of those <laughs> games that Naughty Dog is working on, but we do need more. And and that's that's kind of where it's at. So I think this was them just like, all right, we got a lot more backlash than we anticipated by saying, hey, we're just going to give you what you want mm-hmm. and give you we're not going to take any risks. And all of us like in that we like games, we want something new. We do want to see something new. Does it always work? No. Mm-hmm. But I think a lot of us respect the idea of trying something new so i'm pretty sure i'm confident saying that was what this whole q a was about just hey we're gonna get some new stuff we got the old stuff that you know and love everything is good you're gonna have a good time on playstation 5 i was a little bit uh as you know wishy-washy on the the details of the uh risk averse stuff jason schreier was the first one who who sort of broke that not really news but sort of perspective uh on on sony and how they work and i Definitely agree that they're risk averse with their true first parties. So that's what I've been saying all along. Yes. Naughty Dogs or Santa Monica's. They want them to make blockbusters and nothing more because they are owned their Sony uh, in its purest form. With, and they make a crap ton of money. Yeah, but I think <laughs> the backside of that is they are throwing money at second party studios and these partnerships to yeah. try and do the opposite side of the coin where they are taking risks. They are doing like weird multiplayer games which aren't their niche. They'll be probably doing mm-hmm. like weird. They gave money to Kojima to do his weird thing, and he did it. Uh, so I think you're going to see more of that. So don't expect too many weird new things from Sony's internal studios, but externally they're going to be doing some weird stuff for sure. Yeah, I think that's what they're trying to get across here, but not maybe put it as bluntly as that. As for Ben Studio, uh, I have some level of faith in them after Days Gone. It wasn't a smash hit but there was definitely some rock okay. solid foundations there uh as an open world game it wasn't anything new it, it wasn't uh-huh. anything that we hadn't already seen in a sony first party game it was very derivative you could say but 
I do think that they have a strong to do there. If they can avoid the sort of tumultuary, the 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 backlash that they got from the Sony higher ups for taking too long to develop Days Gone, I think they're in a good spot. Yeah, and I'm excited to see what kind of stuff. Because honestly, the Days Gone IP, like from the beginning, people weren't really set on that. Like it was motorcycle zombies, yeah. and people are kind of worn out in zombies. Have been for a long time, and you're always going to draw comparisons to Last of Us. So I think them working on the IP is best for them. Obviously, they want it to work on Days Gone too, but I think this might be for the best in the long term. So I'm excited to see what they do next. And I agree. I I, I hope they come out with something different, and I put that in quotation marks, in the Sony way of different. Because, yeah, when we first saw Days Gone, it was, wait, is this like a spinoff of The Last of Us? That's what everyone said. We all thought it. So hopefully they give us just a, a little bit different flavor built off their open world engine that they made so i i'm down with that then he moves on to talk about some of the uh upcoming games this fall season or later as we'll find out uh they said they have t- currently two very big very narrative driven games in development horizon forbidden west as was shown in the state of play last week and the next god of war and for both of these they're frankly affected by access to performance capture and talent this is when he was talking about how uh there's obviously some difficulties with covid the biggest one being performance capture and and getting all that sorted uh Mm -hmm. so he's talking about difficulties for that for horizon we think we are on track for at least this holiday season but that isn't quite certain yet john so they haven't got a release date for that but they think they're on track and i trust herman uh (laughs) and he says and we're working so we can confirm that for you as soon as we can take your time herman as long as it's 2021 you can confirm it whenever you want and for god of war the project started a little later, so we've made the decision to push the game out to next year to ensure that Santa Monica Studio can deliver the amazing God of War game that we all want to play. And Studio Santa Monica came out with a tweet themselves saying, We remain focused on delivering a top quality game while maintaining the safety and well-being of our team, creative partners and families. With this in mind, we've made the decision to shift our release window to 2022. Not unexpected, John. <laughs> no. Certainly so, not. Okay. It is not. Uh, on a personal note, damn it, I really, really wanted God of War to come out, but that's because in our fantasy league. Yeah. On an actual broader note of being someone who enjoys games, that's fine. I don't care. R- push it back. Mm-hmm. Take your time. I, Corey Barlog, you are a saint and a hero, and I freaking love you. Please be good. Please don't. Please don't like do something that makes us not like you. But I, I am all for just delaying it. I, I, I could only imagine how busy our falls would have been if we both got if we got horizon and god of war mm-hmm. that would be insane what a stacked lineup for uh christmas time but yeah I, it sucks I, i'm not gonna get any points out of it oh well but i'm gonna get a better game out of it in 2022 so i i think we all win with that one and i think we'll all win when we find out that horizon gets pushed back to march 2022 <laughs> okay. all right shots <laughs> I, I don't think anyone truly believed that when the 2021 came up for the God of War teaser, like, no one believed it. Me and Tim were right oh, at no. the time, I think, to that conference. We were like, we have to, like, talk about it as if it's 2021, but we know it's not. Oh, yeah. Uh, and, like, you wouldn't want it to be. Like, when I heard, when I saw 2021 come up in that teaser trailer, I thought, this is not a true sequel. This is more like an Uncharted... Yeah, Lost, Lost Legacy. Legacy. Lost Legacy, that's it. Yeah. Uh, I thought it was sort of going that route, like a smaller game. But no, it, it seems to be that they're talking about this I, as a true sequel. So it definitely needs the yeah. time for a game as just beloved as 2018 God of War. Huge yep. game. Massive. They go on to talk about cross-generational support, which was a bigger headline than I thought, or like not really a headline, but a bigger like trend on Twitter than yeah. I thought this would be. Yeah. Uh, they're talking about when it, where it makes sense to develop a title for both PS4 and PS5. Uh, well, we will for Horizon Forbidden West the next God of War and Gran Turismo 7 will look into continue that and if PS4 owners want to play the game there then they can if they want to go and play in the PS5 version the game will be there for them that being said it's also very important to have showpieces for PS5 hence the development of Returnal and Ratchet that are exclusively uh, exclusive to the PS5 so sure. there was a big kickoff like Specifically about Horizon because of the way it looked and the state of play, but also God of War. Not so much yeah. GT7, but like they were like, why 
are you putting these games on PS4 when you're trying to push the boy on like PS5 and sell us on that? I think the answer is obvious is that there's about, what, 10 million PS5s out in the wild right now and there's 100 million yeah. PS4s. I mean, numbers speak volumes. <laughs> yeah. If I, I can, uh, everyone, well, not everyone, but a lot of PlayStation owners, if you still have your PS4, are going to buy Horizon and or God of War. Mm -hmm. That's 100 million people, assuming, that are going to buy that game compared to 10 million people. Mm -hmm. I make more money if 100 million people buy a game instead of 10 million people. Yeah, That's that's just the long and short of it. It's a very fine line to walk to because you, you do know that they're like, all right, go. you need to buy your PlayStation 5. Go ahead and buy your PlayStation 5. You can't. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so you might as well play the safe game of let's go ahead and develop for both. And when... Whatever the chip shortage comes back around or someone figures out how to bypass that and we're easier, it's easier for people to get a PlayStation 5. I think you're going to start seeing slowly but surely this is a PlayStation 5 exclusive. This is a PlayStation 5 exclusive. But right now it's just not alienating your fan base. And that that is a good PR. That's a good business strategy. So I, I, I find it very shocking and almost naive of how many people are pissed off that it's like, oh, it needs to be on PlayStation 5. And it's very narrow-minded, in my opinion. John, I think a lot of people were burned by the launch of Cyberpunk 2077. Uh, sure. So much so that, that Sony haven't released it yet uh, on PS4 again. I worry about these games on ps4 like are they actually going to be ps4 games or is it going to be a vastly inferior experience because i look at the state of play for horizon forbidden west and that is a yeah. beautiful gorgeous ps5 game and i don't understand how that is possible on ps4 uh gorilla were sort of described sorry herman Hulse was describing in this this blog post how for the majority of development for Forbidden West, it's been developed on PS4 and continues to be so. And so is more yeah. of a PS4 title being up for, or not up but like enhanced for PS5? Enhanced. So I don't I, know, I don't believe, I can't believe that that game would run nicely on a PS4, especially a base PS4. I, uh, yeah, actually, I don't think anything <laughs> runs nice on a base PS4 anymore. Yeah. But uh, no, I, I'm with you because it's weird. Usually, and again, someone can really correct me, but my understanding is you you actually do the cyberpunk thing, and I hate I'm about to say this, but this is what you do. You actually develop for the biggest over-the-top concept that you can. So for this, it would have been PS5 when we're talking about uh, Horizon Forbidden West. And then you start cutting down what is actually capable in the PlayStation 4. So with it just being... <coughs> mostly developed as PlayStation 4, it's going to be very interesting to see, like, do they have Team B, we'll call it that one, that's going back and like, all right, what can we enhance in PlayStation 5? I know mm -hmm. we've got, they said the, like, the locked 60 4K, yeah. right? I, I think I remember reading that. Yeah. Performance mode. Okay. Yeah. Performance mode and stuff like that. So you've got those to kind of distinguish themselves from PlayStation 4 and PlayStation 5, but I, I am interested to see, interested to see how this is going to play out when you when someone let's be honest IGN is going to sit down and look at the differences between a PS4 Pro and a PS5 and see what happens is it are we going to get better draw distances or are, like HDR is going to look better or load faster there's going to be that stuff but I I really want to see how them going from I we've been developing on PlayStation 4 and now we're adding in PlayStation 5 assets or how they've actually changed the development to suit them to do both systems. I will be refreshing from today until holiday 2021, waiting for the Digital Foundry video to drop about Horizon yes. PS4 versus PS5. I, I can't wait Oh my God, those digital, those digital Foundry videos are blow my freaking mind. Just the best, dude. Go, <laughs> go support them. so technical. Yeah. Uh, regarding PC releases of first-party games, which we have been seeing more of in recent times, Herman says, we want to reach new gamers who haven't yet experienced the great stories, characters, and worlds we've built. Releasing games on PC will not come ever at the expense of building an exciting lineup of great console games. Uh, so basically what we imagine cool. so far is that when they stop selling on PS4 and PS5, then we'll release them on PC. Yep. Uh, I think Uncharted More. 4 is the next rumored one yeah. to be dropping. More uh, people get to play games, which causes the developer to go, hey, we yeah. made more money, which means 
more games. Mm -hmm. Gotta, Everyone wins. Got to make you think how well Bloodborne's still clearly selling that they won't release that on PC. Oh my god, I'm I'm actually shocked that one's not on PC yet. I wonder if the Sony's call or is it FromSoft's call? Or uh, last I heard, actually Sony owns all rights to Bloodborne. Hmm. FromSoft doesn't have anything connected to it. Like, and, and that's that's the same when it comes to Bloodborne too. Literally, it is Sony going, okay, we want two, and they jump into development. So I, I think it is actually a Sony, I don't want to say holding back Bloodborne to go to PC, but that's pretty much what it is. Like, I, I my understanding is FromSoft has, has no actual weight, I guess mm -hmm. is the right word, to put it on PC. Uh, moving on to the continued importance, according to Sony, of their Japanese development wing. Uh, this again ties back, back into their sort of risk-averse conversation. Uh, the sort of downscaling of their Japanese studio and sort of spinning off uh, the Astrobot team into their own studio which we'll get to. Uh, they talk about Polyphone Additional who's the developer behind Gran Turismo there based in Japan. It's such an important part of the PlayStation family making the best driving simulation games in the world. We're building Team Asobi in Tokyo, a world class studio that are developing a franchise for all ages with global appeal. Such a creative team Team Asobi of course the Astrobot team and alongside Asobate, we will continue to maintain and build partnerships through our external development team. So I'm really excited about the future of PlayStation games in Japan and Asia, and I'm grateful for the interest and passionate support of our Japanese teams. Uh, as part of that, they uh, did an additional blog post introducing Team Asobi officially with branding and a Twitter account and everything. It's a studio now. Uh, they talk a lot about in there about who they are, what they've done in the past, uh, what their studio culture is like, uh, but the, the main gist of it is following the release of Astro's Playroom on PS5, Team Asobi is now spreading its wings and growing bigger. This is a very exciting time for the team, and we are very much looking forward to this next chapter. Uh, I think, regardless of whether you downscale the emphasis on the Japan studio, I think spinning off Team Asobi to make Astrobot full games or just other like yeah. 3D platformers or whatever, like let them do what they want. Making them a, a whole new studio, that's great. Uh, that's genius. But in terms of, is this just lip service that they're giving us about the importance of, of Japan or do, do you think there's a genuine uh, love there? Because Sony is obviously a Japanese company, but in terms of PlayStation, yeah. it seems that the power is moving more to the West, to the America and, and European uh, branches. Um, and not really, not really many of the higher ups that we would have saw are in the PlayStation One Two era. Shuhei, she just yeah. kind of fall into the background and stuff. Uh, what do you think? Is this just lip service, or, or are they going to try and build out their Japanese wing a little bit more after the concerns? I, I think this is a more of a wait and see concept. I think they're going to do a little uh, building out of the Japanese uh, development, mainly because they do know they have. If you're looking at your main competitor, which is Xbox, Xbox doesn't have a foot in Japan at all. Mm -hmm. So might as well keep that strong stronghold as best you can when it comes to having Japanese developers. I, I think they are probably going to keep on pushing that one. Everyone loves Astrobot. So I, I don't see why you wouldn't just kind of keep on going with them and kind of going, all right, what is possibly your new IP or like Astrobot Racing or something like that? I, I think Racing. giving team... Oh, yeah. No, no. I literally, when I saw Team uh, Polyphonic, and I was like, I wonder if they would be talking and going, Team Astrobot Racing. Get me out. Get me out. Uh, I was like, I, that, that's that got to be what they're doing, right? That just makes so much. A franchise for all ages with global appeal. No one said anything bad about Astro's uh, Playroom. <laughs> and so you need something that's all ages. And what's the, what's the biggest racing game that no one can touch? <sighs> Mario Kart. <sighs> So why why not swing for the fences? Yeah. Uh, so that's all they they had. Sort of the the slew of announcements being updates on Horizon, Ben Studio, God of War, and this new studio team, Asobi, being uh, a full fledged Sony first party. Uh, that's probably all the news we will get out of Sony first party for a little bit, at least to probably July August. Uh, this is probably them getting at whatever news they need to get out there before. E3 kicks off and people start asking questions, start snipping around. What's God of War doing? <laughs> uh, <laughs> so yeah, that's that's probably their their little info dump. 